Greetings and welcome back to room 303 AP English, the Roberts volume. We're working in our poetic section. We now turn to Naomi Shayab Nye's Where Children Live, a 1982 offering. Now, um, um, Nye is a poet who is very important to us in room 303. We've already at LearnStrong.net given lectures on um, her poem Streets, as well as Daily, as well as her classic Making a Fist. Of course, great poet, songwriter, novelist, born in 1952 to a Palestinian father and American mother. She wrote her first poem, um, uh, according to legend, at six, and has published over 30 volumes of poetry in her life. Truly one of the great poets of our, of our time and our generation. And the ability, as we have said in earlier lectures on night, the ability to capture the most commonplace and yet somehow make it profoundly important. You'll remember what we said uh, uh, in Percy Bysshe Shelley's uh, defense of poetry, that this is what great poets do. Let's play the game one more time. Where children live. Homes where children live exude a, place, a pleasant rumpleness, like a bed made by a child or a yard littered with balloons. To be a child again, one would need to shed details till the heart found itself dressed in the coat with a hood. Now the heart has taken on gloves and mufflers. The heart never goes outside to find something to do. And the house takes on a new face, dignified. No lost shoes blooming under bushes, no chipped trucks in the drive. Grown-ups like swings, leafy plants, slow motion back and forth. While the yard of a child is strewn with corpses of bottle rockets and whistles, anything whizzing and spectacular, brilliantly short-lived. Trees in children's yards speak in clearer tongues. Ants have more hope. Squirrels dance as well as hide. The fence has a reason to be there so children can go in. Even when the children are at school, the yards glow with the leftovers of their affection. The roots of the tiniest grasses curl toward one another like secret smiles. Now, of course, that final line includes the simile and like secret smiles, and we'll pay attention to this at, at 2B, write it down. The power of a, sim uh, of a simile here, that comparison using like or as, this poem, of course, is going to remind us of Wordsworth's classic for 303, My Heart Leaps Up When I Behold a Rainbow in the Sky. The heart of a child, the child is father of the man, Wordsworth will say. And here, notice, we have distinctions that are being drawn, dualisms between the houses, quite literally and, of course, metaphorically, of children and adults. We begin with the notion of the pleasant, a house where children live, a pleasant rumpledness. Now, to be rumpled, of course, is to be kind of like out of sorts, like in the first simile, a bed made by a child, not completely configured correctly and yet somehow wonderful, a yard littered with balloons. To be a child again, one would need to shed details. That is to say, as we get older, our lives somehow seem to get, in our yards of our quote-unquote house, seem to get less and less uh, cluttered. And there's something really sad and tragic about that, right? Um, now, she says, after the coat with the hood, the heart is taken on gloves and mufflers. The heart never goes outside to find something to do. In other words, it seems tragically that as we get older, we lose the heart of a child. And she's wanting to point this out by paying attention to houses. I mean, some of you have, have mentioned this before in 303, right? You drive down the street and you look and you see all this stuff out in the yard and you go, oh, they obviously have kids living there. The chipped trucks are mentioned as well. Notice the eye for details. For example, the yard of a child is strewn with the corpses of bottle rockets and whistles. Anything whizzing, hear all these Z sounds and these W sounds, and spectacular brilliantly short-lived. In other words, the, the beautiful metaphors, the beautiful symbolism of what it means to live a child's life, so short. Let's jump to 2A and messages. Obviously, 
children do live wonderfully complicated and yet wonderfully simple lives as manifest by all the stuff that happens and yet also short-lived, right? It's only a short period of time that one is able to enjoy the life of the child. At 2B we mentioned the powerful similes. We'd also point out the power of verbs, right? Strewn with the corpses, right? That's a beautiful verb, strewn. At 3A, so many titles come to mind. We mentioned Wordsworth's uh, The Rainbow. I'm, I'm going to throw here, though, down uh, for you um, Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird, because so brilliantly in prose, she captures something very, very similar. Uh, the idea that children run in and out of a house and somehow make it their own, and then the house becomes somehow fingerprinted with the lives of children. It's quite wonderful, and for those of us who have been blessed to raise children, we know exactly what this is all about. We have to, of course, clean it up so that it can get all over dirty again. We think about maybe a film like Searching for Bobby Fischer, about a young prodigy, chess prodigy, whose room is just constantly cluttered and yet beautiful in every way. And finally, in 3B, I don't think it's that hard to find a way to relate to a poem like this, right? What, for you, is your childhood memories of a pleasant rumpledness? I mean, what is it for you that qualifies that the best? And at what point do you begin to lament the fact that you kind of lost some of that childlike tendencies? Great spiritual and religious teachers always have taught that to be spiritually pure, one must return to the mind of a child. William Blake's uh, The Lamb Comes to Mind, Little Lamb Who Made Thee, Dost Thou Know Who Made Thee? Uh, a poem that, of course, we've spent some time with already at LearnStrong.net. Well, I hope that uh, our study of, of Nye will send you on to read more of this brilliant poet's offerings. Thank you.